俺は就職できるなら何でもいいから早く決めたいのなんで職が決まんねえのかなそういう態度が面接でにじみ出るから企業に信頼されないんじゃないですか The boys on Trash Taste mentioned in one of the podcast episodes how an anime doesn't need to be objectively great or amazing to leave an impact on you. It just needs to hit different at the right time in your life. And that's exactly how Silver Spoon became one of the anime that influenced me the most. When the pandemic hit a whole ass year ago, I was fresh out of college and utterly confused about what to do next. I hated what I had studied, but I was also the type of person who doesn't like to quit. Watching Silver Spoon made me realize many things about myself and the working world, and ultimately led me to abandon the life I thought I had set up for myself. Now, I'm still in the middle of making those new dreams a reality, but I'm sure that even in retrospect, this will be the anime that inspired me to turn my life around. Buckle up for some personal shit, my friends. Roll intro. One of the things that I've mentioned on my channel is that I'm always interested in learning about a creator who goes against their established type. They may be known for a particular series or attached to a specific genre, but at some point they break away from it to make something completely different. I've talked about this a little bit in my video on Wave Listen to Me and Ohio, and today's video is on a similar series. The name Arakawa Hiromu might be a bit familiar to you. You know her as the creator of Full Metal Alchemist and many other fantasy series. But right after FMA wrapped up, Arakawa and her publisher decided that she should take on a completely different series for her next project. Thus, we got Silver Spoon, a slice of life series set at an agricultural high school in Hokkaido. There are no fantastical elements at play or any world ending stakes here, but rather the story of a teenage boy as he tries to figure out what the hell he wants to do in life. The boy in question is Hachiken Yugo, a high school student from Sapporo who has failed the entrance exams for the high school he originally planned to attend. While his mother is sympathetic to his plight, his strict and domineering father sees his son as a failure. Typical Asian dad. My disappointment is immeasurable. In order to escape this immense pressure, Yugo decides to attend the Oezo Agricultural High School in the countryside. He hopes that by going there, he'll have a far less demanding academic workload and have a moment to breathe away from his father. <laughs> He was wrong. Dumb bitch. Yugo is immediately thrown off by the intensive assignments with animal husbandry and the physical workload each day demands. Not to mention, he has to wake up at 5 in the morning every single day. Oh, good! Many of his classmates also see him as an anomaly for being one of the few students without a farming background. And unlike just about everyone there who intends to have a career in agriculture after graduation, Yugo doesn't really know what he wants to do. From the first episode, I could see the parallels between Yugo and myself. Not to humble brag, but I was also the most studious and least determined person in my college program, and that combination is shit. Everybody expects the top student to really have their shit together and know exactly what they want to do with this massive information they know. But in my case and Yugo's, it was the opposite. If anything, it's easy to be studious. Having a purpose in life is the real challenge. Activities? None. Sports? None. Honors? None. So many memories. More on that later. Now, under normal circumstances, after seeing what a damn alien he is in this new environment, the city boy either gives up and returns home, especially since you can't get good Wi Fi out there, or he tries to pretend he fits in until he gets his diploma. But Yugo is not like those types of kids. Even though he's very underqualified for this line of work, he decides to actually reinvent himself as someone who does care about the stuff he's studying. To most people, they'll look at Silver Spoon as a very funny and charming coming of age story that has a lot of good life lessons, TM, to teach. But for me, this series takes on a far more personal role in my life. I admit I was definitely that kid who could feign interest pretty well. If it's academics, I can fake competency really well. But unlike Yugo, I couldn't go beyond faking interest in my subject of study, and that was my first red flag. More were to follow. <laughs> During college, I started working in a kitchen under a sushi chef. I was god awful at everything, but I learned fast and I was a workaholic, so the chef saw a sliver of potential in me and didn't relegate me to washing rice for 10 years or scrubbing the floors. I realized only after watching Silver Spoon that the kitchen I worked in was really the equivalent of Yugo's life at Ezono. I had zero background knowledge, no goals to ever become a chef, and was not particularly skillful either. But goddammit, I enjoyed doing things with my hands after having to fake niceties and work on my degree in academic bullshit all week long. Slowly, my part time job became my favorite part of the week, and the closer I got to graduation, the more I realized that I didn't want to stop working in the kitchen just so I could pretend to care about my job and field of study again. But just like Hugo, I didn't really know that I wanted to be a chef either. I don't know what the hell I wanted to do at all. I just shoved my college degree in a closet. Poverty. 
This blows! Started doing everything I regretted not doing in the past already, and hoped that somehow, some way, it'll all work, work out, out in the end. end. Dramatic reading, yes. Much like how the films of Hosoda reflect how his life was going at that time, Silver Spoon is Arakawa's reflection on her childhood in Hokkaido. She too grew up in a farming family, and a dairy one at that. You drunk all the fucking milk, man! And even attended an agricultural high school just like Yugo. Most of the characters are based off of real people that she knew. But instead of staying in Hokkaido like her family and friends, she moved to Tokyo to start a completely different line of work. In manga. At least it worked out for her in the end, too. This very personal touch is what makes Silver Spoon such a relatable series to me. And apparently a lot of other people, too, because according to Arakawa, there was an enormous rise in applications to agricultural high schools when the series began. Look at all this free labor. Anyway. Another thing that I appreciate about Silver Spoon is that it dives into the grimmer aspects of farming in a surprisingly nuanced way. It might seem like a cop-out to say, decide for yourself, but the way it's handled here is very good. Yugo loves meat, but having to take part in the process has him consider how privileged city folk like himself are. It all makes him uncomfortable, especially having to raise a piglet only for him to become bacon at the end of the day. But he does love meat, and he has to grapple with the idea of eating an animal that he's raised almost from its birth. The show isn't exactly grisly, but we do get the occasional bloody scene to drive the point home that the animal world isn't all sunshine and lollipops. That's a lot of damage! It can be pretty cruel at times. It really reminds me of my childhood. Y'all may not know, but in Eastern Europe it's somewhat traditional to watch your Christmas pig getting slaughtered. And when you're the one who raised and fed that pig, it's a complicated feeling. But at the end of the day, I think this complicated feeling is better than being far removed from the process of how our food gets on our tables. Going back to the characters in this story, let's look at who's around Yugo. All of the cast has their own little quirks and weirdness, and the series does stop and poke fun at them as well. Sure, they're all obsessed with farming in different ways, but we also have a weeb and a baseball freak. And some of the teachers love hunting and cracking open a cold one with the boys after school hours. No underage drinking, though. Nobody is just a one-dimensional farm freak, and every time a secondary character gets screen time, I'm genuinely interested in learning more about who they are. Shut the fuck up, no one cares. Know your fucking place, trash. Yugo's older brother Shingo is fascinating to me. He's the exact opposite of Yugo. He managed to get into the University of Tokyo, which is no small feat to say the least, but he immediately dropped out, mostly to spite their father. And Shingo, who has no intention of living to serve someone else, decides to pursue his own dreams instead. Thus, he decided to travel the country with the intention of becoming a chef. It's disgusting, what is that? What am I looking at? Maybe not a good chef, but he doesn't care if his food would send anyone to the hospital. Bone apple tea. His father might see him as a disappointment, but Shingo's goal is his own happiness, and he couldn't care less about meeting someone else's expectations. I learned something from Shingo, and Yugo did too, although begrudgingly. Lastly, romance leaves a bit to be desired here. I like that Yugo and Aki don't always act like idiots around one another and can usually hold a conversation, but it progresses a bit too slow for my liking. Sure, the romance isn't a major focus for the anime, but by the second season, it starts to come into the spotlight. Or maybe it's because I already had someone in my life at that point that it really left something to be desired. I don't know. My generation suffers from finding rewarding work, and I discuss some of the reasons why that might be in my Anatomy of an Anime Office Worker video. Silver Spoon is bittersweet to watch because it's a story about a boy finding that purpose in life. The way I understand this series, although your work may be very difficult and not cut out for everyone, as long as it is rewarding to you, it's worth it. Sometimes we choose a path for ourselves to try to escape the difficulties in life. And sometimes it backfires, and it's up to us to see if it's actually worth it in the end. Silver Spoon endorses the idea of personal happiness, and it is our responsibility to get it. Who knows, maybe in the process of running away from your responsibilities and hardships, you'll actually stumble upon a purpose in life. I sure as hell am trying to. See you next time! <laughs> Sounds depressing.